Welcome, Nadine. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Very nice to meet you, James. And hello to everyone else out there. <laughs> <laughs> we, generally, we generally start these things with a, with a quick introduction to yourself and who you're representing, if you don't mind. Oh, no, of course. Um, my name is Nadine. I'm a born and raised East Berliner, and I'm a very happy and proud Berliner. Um, since I started working and since I started my professional career, I was always kind of representing Berlin. I used to work for the Berlin Tourism Board. I worked for the Moven Peak Hotel and the Regent Hotel. And I was always kind of an ambassador um, to the world um, to highlight how beautiful our destination Berlin is and how such an interesting history it has. And um, I try to bring people to Berlin and hopefully we can do that soon again. Sure. Um, before we sort of get on to the amazing venue that we want to discuss with, with yourself, yes. um, I guess that's a good place to start in terms of Berlin. I know we have a few travel issues, restrictions and things that are still unfortunately in place. But what we're tending to find with our clients, are we, 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 we're able to talk about destinations. And I think it's important that we kind of keep our clients up to date that when these amber, red, green traffic light situation goes um, and the variants go, that the places are ready. So what, what is the current situation with Berlin at the moment? Great. Well, to be very honest, um, we were very shocked that um, we heard that the 21st of June was not the date that everything was released and um, finally eased in the UK. But I think this is something we learned through the pandemic situation. You just need to be flexible and you need to stay positive and optimistic. And that's what we do here in Berlin. Um, currently, Within Berlin, um, restrictions have been eased because incidences went down. We are currently allowed to welcome 200 people indoors or even 1,000 people for open air events. And I've just double checked as per the 3rd of July, they will even update that to 500 people indoors, still considering the social distances and um, Hotels have reopened, museums are open, you can go into cafes and it feels life is coming back to town and um, there is a positive outlook still. You need to, when you do meetings, you need to wear a mask, you need to have a negative test or you need to be vaccinated. Yet there is light at the end of the tunnel. And um, I know many are familiar with the Berlin airport, which we were finally able to open last year. And now we have this new international airport and there are no um, international flights or hardly any. So <laughs> that's, that's a, a typical one. story for <laughs> Berlin. Um, but hopefully this will get better soon again. <laughs> I think what always interests us and our clients with regards to Berlin, it's, it's almost sort of regarded particularly by sort of our clients in, in terms of being quite corporate and very much meetings in particular for, you know, in terms of going out there for events. But what strikes me is when you sort of dig under the surface in terms of the culture and the opportunity you have to come out there to do more than just a meeting in terms of incentives and things like that. It's a really quite an amazing destination to sort of put forward. It absolutely is because you, um, we often discuss that, um, like Venice has a typical picture if you talk about Rome and Paris. Berlin is a very diverse city and it's a very liberal city and it's about 30 years ago now that the wall came down and since then our city has changed and um, when you walk the streets you hear people from all parts of the world living peacefully together. Um, Berlin has a huge startup scene and it has so much history and also so much future and yet it is a very green destination. And I think it was the city that really set the floor for a united Europe and uh, for the freedom that we have nowadays. Um, and it's so great. I mean, we are still neighbors with Great Britain and all the other countries. And um, it's wonderful to have um, within like a short distance of about two hours, you can go to another country uh, you can experience the the destination, and Berlin has a variety of hotels, which are still very affordable. We have a very good network here in Berlin, and um, there's such a huge cultural scene. So whenever it will be possible to do live events again, people will enjoy traveling in a safe environment, and um, Berlin is definitely a place to go to. 
So we've talked we've talked about the opportunities and why we should come to Berlin. So I guess we should really discuss about why we're here, sort of the venue that you're you're representing today, and why we should be considering that with our plans moving forward. Yeah, well, the Exica, which is the venue I'm representing, exists for more than 20 years, and it's located right next to the Brandenburg Gate. Um, what you should know is that we are a bit of a hidden secret because we are located inside a bank building, which is the DZ Bank, which is right next to the American Embassy and right next to the Adlon. And once you step into the building, our guests are overwhelmed, especially when they enter for the very first time, because the architect of our building is Frank O'Gary. Some may be familiar with his name, but once I mentioned the buildings, they definitely are. It's the Disney Concert Hall in LA he designed and the Bilbao Guggenheim Museum right. or the Louis Vuitton Foundation in Paris. And um, the architecture is just striking. There's a lot of daylight. As you can see, I'm now sitting in his inner circle room and it's a very um, daylight flooded location. It has amazing acoustics. It has a very futuristic design. And we used to run around 160 events throughout the year. Um, we had the next mission to Mars, the ASA and NASA who were here. Um, we had groups from China, from all around the world, um, many people from the UK. And uh, we are just very, very eager to start running events again. And um, I will send you a video link because Throughout the last year, we started producing event videos to show what the venue can offer and what concepts we have brought into place um, to experience the places. And hopefully soon it will be possible to travel again. Already it's kind of ticking our boxes because we tend to we tend to sort of put our clients into venues that, that have a lot of character, a lot of history, that are quite quirky. Um, so yeah. the real wow factor. So just from what you've said there. Um, kind of already sort of putting it on, on our radar but in terms of types of events that we can we can put on there what what, what sort of events can we put out in there for our clients mm -hmm. well, we have about 10 event rooms in total i'm now sitting in our boardroom which has a very focus uh, a very great acoustic it was designed like a concert hall that is a room which we have transformed into a studio due to the situation and this is the room which can be used for smaller meetings with 20 or 30 people or digital or hybrid events. Then we have one main room, the forum, which used to be the room big enough for up to 500 people. And at the moment it can host 100 people. And we have one beautiful room upstairs, which is the sky lobby. It's located on the sixth floor. And from there you are on eye level with the German government and with the Quadriga. And you have a wonderful view from there. This room is big enough for 50 to 80 people. And um, we have our own team of chefs on board because we always thought it's nice to have a beautiful venue, but people enjoy good food, good drinks. And we are all foodies here at the venue and we love our catering. So we have our own catering team on board and we also cater for off-site venues. We do cater for the Berlin Marathon. We are currently in touch with the um, New Year's Eve organizational team to run their event there. So you can enjoy the Exica, but you can also go off-site. And it works for anyone, literally, um, for anyone who wants to do a very unique upscale event, but also for one who just wants to have a short meeting right in the city center. Are there, are there always as an experience. Are there opportunities in terms of indoor and outdoor events there, or, or is it purely an indoor, indoor venue? It purely is an indoor venue, not um, putting out the place um, where we are located. So being right next to the Brandenburg Gate, um, people have to arrive in front of the gate. They can take pictures. So the first experience is the outdoor arrival um, to see the Brandenburg Tour, uh, to take pictures there. And then the second experience is entering the building. What we can do is we can do smaller drinks receptions in front of the door, but otherwise it's the experience up on arrival and up on departure. And um, it changes throughout the day. It's beautiful and busy in the morning. And then at night, 
it's just the gate is illuminated, but the square is almost empty. So for the, for the millennials, they can still get their, their amazing Instagram shot. <laughs> exactly. Very important today, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the social profile. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Okay, so so in terms of we mentioned sort of slightly in terms of group sizes, what 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 sort of group sizes? What's the maximum that restrictions obviously gone? What 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 could we look to put there? What type of event size could we we put there? Up to date, we can run events with around one hundred and fifty people at a very maximum, and hopefully in autumn, if everything goes well and fingers crossed, we will be able to have about three hundred people again. Okay, that's a good good group size. So yeah, and also I think I think as we're finding out, our group sizes kind of fit within that, um, and hopefully we can get moving a bit quicker because of that, rather than the, those that have got thousands of people to try and transport everywhere and all. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and one more thing I would like to mention is um, we have two people in our team who were trained as hygiene officers, so they can always recommend hygiene concepts. Uh, we have an air conditioning working here in the system, which works on fresh air and which has extra filters. We can offer rapid testing and the ceilings are very high in the building due to the fact that it is located in an atrium. So it's almost like an open air venue and you can see the sky and you have ceilings of more than 10 meters. So there's a lot of air and there's a lot of space in the venue, which nowadays is very important and gives people a better feeling. Yeah, no, it's, that's a great point, to be honest with you. We, we're tending to find that if, if we can't, if we if we have to move an event indoors, because there's obviously a lot of call at the moment for just keeping things outdoors. Um, it is important, obviously, to know about the, the ventilation and, and, and that kind of thing works really well. What also struck me was it, it's really really beneficial moving forward that you have a team there that will either work with us as planners or or dmcs that we would put in place for for an event because yeah i think that's good i'm all for relationship building anyway but i think it's, it's key that we, we we have that information in-house with the venues that, that work with us rather than kind of relying on word of mouth and can we put that on and it it, it, it means there's less hidden surprises when, when we put the event mm. on the way. Normally, our project managers, they really grow together with the event planner throughout planning and conducting the event. They are a team and they just work hand in hand. And um, that's always great to see. And that is very, very important nowadays, even more than it used to be. Fantastic. Well, I, I guess it's a, it's a really great way to, uh, to introduce the, the venue. Is, is there anything else you'd like us to know at, at all regards to that? Yeah, uh, what I would like to point out and what I would like to highlight as well is that um, Berlin as a destination, but also we as a venue and as a caterer have moved forward into a more sustainable direction. We were certified as a sustainable venue and caterer two years ago. And Berlin as a destination as such wants to become the sustainable meeting destination for Europe. Um, we work on green energy, um, we have regional partners for our catering, and um, that becomes a very, very important and relevant topic. And if the pandemic has told us something, it's probably to be more careful with our resources. We have realized that we are social human beings, that it is very, very important to have personal encounters but probably we do not need to travel as much around the globe as we used to just for short meetings. But um, keeping an eye on sustainability is so relevant. And um, that is something which really we have a green heart, if you like to put it that way. And that's something that is very important to us. Yeah, I, th I think I think that's been the real shift over the last year um, with, with a lot of destinations, a lot of cities. We've, we've sort of noticed with likes of Belfast and with Copenhagen, a real sort of growing movement in terms of sustainability. I think before before this, there were certain things being put in place, um, but it was from our perspective, it always seemed to be a little bit of a buzzword rather than a reality. So exactly. it's, great, it's great to see the, the time and the investment now that is going in, in place for sustainability into destinations. Yeah, this will be the future. Absolutely. Otherwise, we have no planet B. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, OK, again, if there's anything else you'd like to put across, uh, but it's been absolutely amazing uh, finding out uh, not just about Berlin, but about about the venue. I would just 
invite people to take a look at our venue online, uh, follow the video, and then um, as soon as you will be allowed to travel again, um, please have Berlin on your agenda and come to see us. Absolutely. Well, we're, and I can, I can imagine we're already going to be looking to come out and do some site visits and some fan trips, but we're certainly uh, we're certainly keen to put our groups back out into Berlin as soon as we can. Perfect. That's wonderful to hear. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining me. Thank you, James. Have a good day. Take care. And stay safe. Thanks. Welcome to Berlin in the middle of Europe. The city is reawakening. Life is coming back to town. Hoteliers are smiling because they can welcome guests again. Museums are open. Art and culture can be experienced. Event planners are ready to plan your tour. Venues such as the Axica set the floor for your event indoors and outdoors. There are plenty of options. Now is the time to plan. We are ready to go.